All right, guys, Mayo's date with destiny is nearly upon us. September 11, Tyrone in Crow Park. Who would have thought it? So we've created a few podcasts leading up to the game. And today's guest is none other than the man, the myth, the legend that is John Mann. Mayo GAA royalty. So I hope you enjoy. Mayo for Sam. Good luck. Awfully jersey, is it? I know actually fucking clear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, Brilliant. I, put, I didn't get I didn't get a line out today down here in a scroll on my own. So I put I put on the wash machine this morning with your t-shirts, but uh, I didn't manage to get it out on the line today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say I'd say you've 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 a few you've a few jerseys uh, over have, the years picked up. And you know, I was just talking to a, a, somebody the other day about this the amount of gear now that that's thrown around dressing rooms. I mean, it's incredible because since the GPA got involved in intercollegiate teams, they have to get a, a, a winter kit, a summer kit, and they're entitled to two of this and two of that or the other. And normally, you know, there's no fucking one thrown in there for me as well. Are you suggesting suggest I should change this? No, not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all. Fuck you, I will now. Now that you say about all the jerseys, my, my uncle, he uh, manages the Sligo under 16 ladies. Oh, and uh, the, the amount of stuff that they have and have to get through is just crazy. Even for an oh, under 16 team. Yeah, it's unreal, yeah. It's unreal. Like Pete, you had to battle like eighteen lads to get that uh, handball jersey. I have. A, I'm wearing a handball GA jersey here, and uh, it was it hard out. enough to get. They're, they're like hen's teeth. They're like hen's teeth. <laughs> for, first, firstly, John, thanks a million for for coming for hopping on this evening. Uh, you're welcome, um, David. No problem. Glad to oblige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, we've done, we've done. How many podcasts have we done, Chris? Now with with, with guests, twenty five, twenty six. I almost. I, I, this is this is the one I'm actually the most nervous about. I don't know what it uh, why. I, 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 <laughs> and rightly and, and rightly so, Stephen. If I were you, I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's, there's no problem. We, we, we'll uh, we'll have the crack. Uh, the, the, what kind of traction are you getting on your podcast, guy? Are you getting good um, feedback and all that? Yeah, yeah we, get, we, we, we cover we cover like um, all sorts sports uh, comedians in the same yeah. industry as ourselves. Or yeah. we've had MMA stars on. We've had Ashley Daly, you know, Tom Egan, that sort of thing. So it doesn't matter what it is. If it's an interesting story or it's relevant, right. we throw it up. Fair play. Fair play. So, so the the so big we, thing obviously is the match on on Saturday. We are lunatics when it comes to to Mayo GEA. And yeah. we just thought we'd, 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 we'd send out a few emails and a few messages to see who, who could we get. And uh, John, it was great that uh, you replied and we have you on. Yeah. Very welcome. No problem, Stephen. How, how, do you see, how do you see it going and how, how the hype this week? I've, I've, I've had more hype. I've seen more hype leading up to a game. Oh, no question. There's no question. We did crazy stuff in the past. I mean, yeah. the old jingle songs and the nonsense that went on around the place and... Uh, it's uh, it's very moderate at the moment. I think there's great color. I I, I think it's the way it should be. Um, yeah. Bunting and flags. I, I was down on Foxford last uh, Monday week, and I saw them, you know just hoisting the the green and red over the bridge, and it just looked fantastic. And there's a there's a lovely atmosphere, and it's I think we've matured uh, as a as a county when it comes to um, getting to one of the finals and being involved. And this is our eleventh as well since nineteen fifty one. Not a good experience coming out of Court Park with the previous 10. But uh, there's something, there's a lovely maturity about this. There's a maturity about the team. There's an experience. We've, we've become more experienced as supporters. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lovely atmosphere. It's just building slowly as you would like it to be. If you're involved as a player or as a manager, you would say this is the perfect kind of a lead into a final. That's the way I, I sense it. And that's the way I feel it. Because in the past, when I was directly involved myself, I often felt that it would have been brilliant in hindsight if I could have taken the players 
off to Inish Turk or Clare Island or Inish Gay Islands and just bomb them in, drop them in on the morning of the final, just to remove them from the crazy daft stuff that went on. But yeah. look, it was of its time, and uh, no one, just that's the nature of, of us Mayo people, we just go a little bit daft and crazy, and we get a little bit overexcited, and that giddiness that you would expect around on our final, just it bubbles to the surface, and uh, we can't contain ourselves, but it's, it's great in many ways. Yeah, and, and you, you hit the nail on the head there. It does feel like a, a more mature build up uh, this this Saturday. And and as you said about Foxford, I pa I passed through Foxford a lot, and uh, they've really made an effort. Like all the bunching up along the trees and, and and the flags is just brilliant. It's everywhere, Steve. Yeah, because my, my wife was driving the Galway there the other day, and she said, "Oh my God, Ballandine looks magnificent." But every town and village has just bought into it, and everybody has a flag. Everybody has the bunting and, you know, it's, it's, it's hoisted and we're just a proud county and there's a great anticipation and hope about this year. I haven't, it's the first time we've gone into an honour final as favourites. Not, yes. that that not that that means anything, but it's a, a new departure for us. So there's just that air of expectancy and uh, it brings with it that added little bit of excitement, which is which it's a lovely feeling. It's just very nice because, as I say, we're sports mad. It is, this is sport after all. It's, it's a... Uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a lifestyle choice for those that play it. It's a it's a hobby for us um, people that are involved yeah. in it, and we just love following our team. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And uh, tell us this, John. Who do you think is going to win? What's your predictions? I mean, you know, funny enough, I, I I've spoken to many good uh, um, ex footballing colleagues of mine, Willie Joe Padden today, and there's Martin Carney yesterday morning, and uh, just off the phone to a friend of mine at Casa Bar and. And I listened to a podcast um, this morning uh, that Peter Canavan was um, talking to, um, uh, talking in or participating in. And they're, everybody's talking that this, this could be set up for a draw and a play. I think, like, I mean, it's, there are two evening match teams. There's an air of excitement, class and talent and pace about both sides. And I just get the impression, having watched Mayo this year and Tyrone, obviously, we've got two surprise packers. Everyone anticipated Dublin and Kerry not on the final. So from that perspective, it's a novel and unique pairing, similar to the under 21, 20 final that was at a couple of weeks ago between Ross Garman and Offaly. There was something, there's something different about this year. Last year, obviously, we had the excitement of a Cavan win an Ulster title, and we had um, Tipperary win a Munster. You couldn't have predicted that. So no. the things are changing ever so much, but how, I mean, I just said to a guy there that has a, a, a punt in a game, I said, certainly I wouldn't put stolen money on either team this weekend. I just kind of call it. And I mean, I'm not on the fence. I can make arguments for both teams. I look at the sub bench that Tyrone have, Cotton McShane, your man Mark Bradley, they have uh, Tierney McCann. The three or four guys there that I think would walk on the Mayo team. But then, and I look at the Tyrone defence, and there's no doubt about it, they have a lot of talent in their, in their defence. McGeary, no, number six, sent that back the last day, was superb. Connor Myler came back, did a great job on Paulie Clifford. And they have a lot of talent in their full back line with Hempsey and McKernan and McNamee. But they don't have a Lee Keegan. They don't have a Paddy Durkin. If Oshi Mullen is fit, I mean, those three and Ahura, I feel, would walk on the Tyrone team. So when you sit down and try and analyse it as we do and we're doing right now, it's just so difficult. I just hope it's not sided by a blunder from an Ulster referee. And that's all I hope. And <laughs> enough, we talk about... We, we do, and, and look at Joe McQuillan is a good referee and don't want to cast aspersions on him. But, but I mean, a referee in a game of this nature becomes absolutely critical. And here we are, we're talking about, we look at the forwards that might win it for us and the rumour going around that Killian O'Connor might be back fit and Owen McLaughlin is going well in training. I mean, all this rumour starts uh, and it's, it's the same before every all Ireland final. But, uh, you know, it could, be, it could be the two goalkeepers that might decide this, uh, this, the outcome of this final. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I mean, if the Tyrone, Tyrone team, they, they, they work on the edge. I mean, a lot of their a lot of their tackling borders on fouls. A lot of their fouls border on black cards. And they have picked up two black cards in the semi-final. They picked up a number of black cards in the Ulster Championship. If Robbie Henley comes up and lands a bomb or two from 65 metres out or 60 metres out, that will just change the dynamic. You'll now have... The Tyrone boys, hold on a second here, no fouls, don't give away a freeze because this guy is on form. Similarly with Niall Morgan, we saw the scud he landed from 70 metres the last day. So 
though two goalkeepers might have a, a, a say in the outcome of this game, and whichever yeah, that's, that's, on form might decide it. That's yeah. a very, very interesting concept. Yeah. And uh, we actually had Porig on a podcast earlier on in the year, and uh, I always, I always thought uh, from the, the couple of years that he's there, I thought he he can make a star. Uh, I just his 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 just his Mental. willingness to throw himself into everything. I sure Stephen, no, he's, I, he, he, he's an icon. Like, I mean, yeah. he's the one guy that, uh, uh, for some reason, you know, when you're talking about the qualities we have in our team, some people, because he's new and he's new onto the squad and he, he hasn't got much game time in National League and what have you, you're, you're inclined to overlook him. But how could you? Because the man is a machine. He is just, yeah. you know, you, when, you're, when you're picking the dynamic of a team and you're looking at what you need in a team, obviously, you need finishers and you need guys who are, uh, are talented up front, but you need a couple of dogs. I'm not suggesting that poor Cole is a <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 want, you want a go-to guy to take, to take care of business. And yeah. we saw in the Connick final when a guy, you know, I, and I defend him strongly because I watched it back on the tape a couple of times and all, a, a YouTube clip circulated with what uh, happened with one of the Italian's man from Galway. You don't mess with O'Hora. And he's yeah. just... And, I, and, and, and it was nice to hear uh, um, the likes of, um, uh, I think uh, Peter Canavan re uh, referenced him in particular. He is the type of player that I felt if I had back in the day when I was manager Mayo, we could mm -hmm. possibly have won in All Ireland. We just didn't have that kind of a, a dog. He's just, he's been superb. And to see, the, he, he's, I mean, he's just a machine and I can't describe him. And he's a smart machine and he's a winner. And we saw, we all saw him on that TV documentary where yeah. the Ranger wing, which I'm familiar with, um, uh, uh, where they tried to break them, they couldn't break them. So yes. you can imagine, and I, and I spoke to somebody in Calabar there a couple of weeks ago, and they, they suggested to me that, um, you know, the, a, a training session might be an hour and 30 minutes. And there's Porik out the pitch on his own, going through some MMA stuff or some stretching or core work, what have you, that little bit extra. I mean, and attitudes are contagious. And you're mm -hmm. looking, you have a couple of young fellas like the Rhino Dunhoes or the Tommy Conroys or the Owen McLaughlins or the Ushie Mullins, and they're looking at this guy here and they're like, hey, look what, we should be doing some of that as well. Look at this guy. So yeah. you have a guy that brings that edge to the Mayo scene. It's a huge ace. Um, one, yeah. one thing, just to circle back on the goalkeepers for a second, the, the kick-out strategies that are going to be, like it's such a big part of the game now. And yeah. like, you got to say Mayo nailed it in the semi-final, but Tyro that might be a weakness that Tyrone showed that Niall Morgan kicked an awful lot of uh, his own kickouts long, and David Morn swallowed them up. His own and just and that that's maybe where Mayo might have an edge in midfield. Yeah, I mean Chris, the modern uh, um, coach and, and manager spends an inordinate amount of time on tactics. And two of the things you spend an odd amount of time uh, to discussing because it, it has huge consequences on the outcome of the game. Do you uh, uh, kick outs for and kick outs against? Yeah. And yeah. do you concede? Like, I mean, a lot of teams now concede the kick outs and they set up roadblocks between the two 45s. Mm -hmm. So, for argument's sake, if, if um, you know, Tyrone back off our kick outs and allow us to clip a short out to one of our cornerbacks, Lee Keegan or whoever, whoever it might be. And it was 21 meters. Now they have maybe two roadblocks of six, two sixes between yeah. the 245s. And they, their philosophy is you're not, you can have the ball, but you're not passing here. Now, yeah. how, how, I mean, in order to, 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 uh, to uh, expose that, uh, to, um, a defensive type of a, a strategy that a team might set up, you've got to go along. You've got to take the gamble. Tyrone, Kerry pushed up on Nile Morgan's kickouts. They forced them to go along because they felt they would have an advantage in the year. And you're right, Chris, they yeah. did have an advantage. And they won a huge amount of Nile Morgan's kickouts. But yet Tyrone won the game. Why? Because they got three goals in the game. That's something that Kerry weren't able to do. So do we hold an edge around middle of field? We're not assuming it's Jim or the Connors going to be there. Uh, and um, from briefly... Um, Matty, Matty Ryan. Uh, Matty. Who, uh, Ma uh, Matty has just been awesome. Uh, Matty has Brilliant. just been superb. Yeah. But they're not really Joe Patton's like. I mean, they're not big, big ball winners. And we, and David Moore is a giant of a man. 
And then the argument floats around, well, should we pay Edna Shea out there maybe for a kick-out? Yeah. I, I was just going to ask you that. Where would you play Edna Shea? Where would you well, play him? I would play him. 100% I'd play him because, uh, and I don't want to be disrespectful, when you start looking at the options, and we might, there might, I expect an element of surprise has to kick in from management. And I'm sure Tyrone might be contemplating, well, do we throw in Colin McShane? Colin McShane, McShane has scored 1-8 in this year's championship. And he's only played little calf, yes. Okay, but well, he got about 35, 40, 40 minutes in against um, Kerry in the All-Ireland semi-final. This guy now was a prodigious uh, talent, uh, an All-Star in 2019. He's an awesome footballer, toyed with the idea of going over to Australia, refused a two-year contract, uh, turned it down, and has decided to throw his lot in with Tyrone. Unfortunately, he got a very, very, very bad ankle injury, that re- and he came back a little bit too soon, that required a second surgery. He is a super talent. And when you look at the element of surprise, Peter, I know I'm getting away from the issue about Ed O'Shea, but I'll come back to it. Um, the chances are they might consider starting him instead of maybe a Conor McKenna uh, or, a, or a Darren McCurry. Just they might, if they're looking to maybe upset Mayo, now, how we plan for this? But well, every management will plan. They apply, uh, they'll, they'll plan for every eventuality. I think the two corner forwards that we have in Tommy Conroy and Ryan O'Donoghue, they might need a little bit of minding in an all round final. They're playing superbly well. Ryan O'Donoghue is playing with a swagger and a confidence. And I believe when Killian got injured down in Ennis that day, Ryan put up his hand. He said, I'm the free taker. I'm going to be the free taker. I want to be the free taker. Now, he's only 23 years of age. Yeah. But what a superb attitude. And he has absolutely flourished. Remember last year's all round final, he had a brilliant game at, at number 11, playing sort of half forward until he fatigued. He ran out of juice with about 20 minutes ago in that game. He was called ashore. I mean, I felt the last day he could, he could have gone on for another hour after um, injury time. He was just superb. He's full of energy. But they're young. And seven Tommy Conroy are young, a little bit inexperienced. And I feel, looking at, uh, at the way Tyrone play, and they do play on the edge, I just feel Pinead Noche in there, that physicality, that presence at 14, uh, at 14 Roland McNamee will obviously pick him up. And they will play Frank Burns as a sweeper in front of him, I suspect. So we mightn't get, you know, a lot of scores out of Aiden. I know, and, and he gets a lot of criticism for, for not delivering in all-around finals. But I think we have got to start him at 14 and maybe in a floating role. Uh, I don't, I see him, we start him there for the throw-ins in, the la- in, in, in a number of games. That's not working. If you recall in last year's all-around final, was a Con Callahan that raced away. We got yeah. uh, conceded a goal after something like many seconds, and there was poor Aiden looked so bad trying to close him down because he doesn't have that kind of yeah. pace and he doesn't have no. the leg. Well, I mean, to me, he's he, I mean, his tactic is work rate. I mean, a lot of this stuff that's unattractive to the eye, and a lot of spectators or followers or supporters might necessarily see the type of work that he does, and it's just his physical presence. This well, is again, uh, my theory, my theory on that John is if, if, if people don't see that it's because they don't want to see it because he's an easy target he's an easy target for criticism I agree with you Stephen and he has become an easy target and and so, you know some of it obviously because he attracts a little bit because he had big social media attraction and he's that other element of his life good luck to him he's maximizing yeah. everything he has and more, yeah more power to him more power yeah. to him yeah. I mean and but well, there is a cohort of people out there that don't appreciate or recognize that he has a big Twitter following I mean, he's making a damn good living out of it, apparent, apparently. And yeah. you know, guys do this, like, I mean, and some might argue, well, you won't see the Tyrone boys do it, or you won't see the Kilkenny Hullers do it. Well, some of the Kilkenny Hullers have. They're going into modelling and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Joe probably had a thing in the, was the Irish Independent about it. You're c- criticising them, saying that their male players are celebrity, celebrity yeah, losers. losers. Yeah, I mean, Joe... Joe, Joe had you know? Yeah, Joe. Joe has a, has a job to do. Obviously, he's got to keep in the spotlight, and uh, yeah. he, he, his uh, style of journalism is all on the edge, inviting controversy. Uh, similar to Pat Spillane, who went completely and utterly over the top um, last weekend uh, with Sean Cavanagh. I thought quite fairly, Pat Spillane went was w- completely out of order in making wild yeah. suggestions, loaded with any way. About even course. if they were rumors, even if they were rumors that he heard, you, you don't bring them, you don't bring that to the national broadcast. No, exactly. I, 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 thought, I, I thought it, it, it was very, very done in very poor taste, and it didn't, as, as a as just an interested uh, observer of the game, I just thought, well, I didn't like hearing that, and it wasn't, it wasn't nice. 
yeah. yeah. Maybe he let the emotions get the better of him. Like, you know, he might have... Well, he, he, he's done it on a couple of occasions. <laughs> there, there are those out there that, that are suggesting it might need a little bit of freshening up. But look at... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm the show that is. I'm talking about RTE, uh, um, that is. But look, at people want to be uh, no more than a, a famous uh, um, soccer um, pundit a number of years ago. People tune in for a variety of reasons. They love the uh, the banter and the, the, the fun element of uh, Spillane and Brawley back in the day, and that attracted a lot of viewers. And remember, guys, that at the end of the day, RTE have got a, a viewership and advertising. Yes. Yes. Too. So they are... Yeah, those guys have have contributed uh, handsomely to the coffers. To, yeah. to go to go back to when um, when you were looking after the team and you got to back back to back All Ireland finals in the late nineties, um, and you said obviously a big part of what you would have loved to do in hindsight is take the team away and put them in a bubble and try and drown out the noise or whatever. Like, what's the week leading up? In, in the camp, like, I'm sure it's mad, full of excitement and expectation, but how do you control that and try and keep it eyes on the eyes on just a game? Yeah. That? Chris, first of all, like, I mean, things have changed seismically in the last 25 years. 1996, we were playing out of Division 3. There was an enormous novelty of getting to an All-Ireland final, uh, beating uh, um, Kerry in a semi-final to get there. There was... Um, it just, the place just went absolutely wild. And I was absolutely convinced going into that Ireland final that we would win it. Uh, we didn't have the type of science uh, or sports psychology that we have around the team now. We don't have that bubble scenario. We didn't have that maturity that the modern footballer has. Remember, most of these Mayo guys, like, I mean, have played in so many all Ireland finals uh, right now. That 1996, uh, 1996 team, only one or two had been, or a couple of them had been involved in the 89 against Cork. So mm. a huge novelty about it was, I was I was young. I had spent four years down in Clare. I was quite inexperienced, and you know the benefit of hindsight, Chris, you would do things a little bit uh, differently. And you know when you lose a game, a ball hopping over the bar. I mean that that t time in Croke Park, when the camera guys came down and started congregating around the manager on the sideline, at that stage you literally have one hand on the Sam Maguire, and that's yeah. actually I had that experience. The photographers are corralling around me, ready for the fucking. And the next thing, the ball, <laughs> next thing, the ball hops over the bar from that innocuous kick from from uh, uh, Mr. Coyle from the halfway line. Hopped went over uh, Pat Holmes' head and hopped over the bar. I mean, bonker stuff. It's similar to 2016, the two own goals we conceded. Yes. I yes, mean, great. and if if you do believe in a curse, we well, said. Well, th there's the example of it all, guys. Come on. You know, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But look at, uh, Chris, to answer your question, there's a, I mean, the, the amount of, of, of uh, um, support teams that's around the team now. I mean, I think I, I read uh, David Fitzgerald had 23 uh, support staff when he won the All-Ireland Final in 2013 with, uh, with Clare. Jim wow. Gavin, I think, had up in the 20s as well. I mean, that's a 20-team support staff to mind everyone. Like, I mean, Bernard Dunn was brought into the Dublin team just as a mentor, one-to-one -one engagement, no GA background whatsoever, a winner in a different, and you see an awful lot of guys now who are not involved in GA coming in to learn, to add their experience and know how, how to manage. You look at Caroline Courage, the Sligo girl who has just developed an enormous reputation because she's been involved with Tyrone, she's involved in Dublin footballers, she's involved with Tipperary hurlers. Now, better than with Limerick. And they're all winners. This guy, Gerald. Yeah, well, winning, winning, winning is a habit as well. And, and if you can if you can surround yourself with winners, it, it, it rubs off on, on people. That could well, be... I mentioned it, yeah, Stephen, earlier about attitudes being contagious and what have you. I mean, if you have that with the positivity and it's managed properly. And yeah. James Horn has a very, very good team around him as well. And he's a sports psychologist and sports science and operations manager and all that kind of thing is managed. So his job now is just to deal with the players and he have others engaging with them. So there's a huge amount of communication. I, I, I do know, getting back to the, to the, to the height thing uh, and, and keeping the players away from it. Now, I have contacted on the fringe players and I even contacted Ki Killian O'Connor. I, I, I was talking to Killian and um, in the hope that because he was at the time, I thought he was injured. Now, if, since I've heard about rumours, uh, just to try and get him onto the podcast, create a bit of hype for the week. 
And like every one of them said, would love to do it, but James would lose his life. <laughs> he would lose his life. <laughs> if, if we even if we even broke out yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that is true. And, and, and now you get the, uh, you get all, you park all that, all the distractions. You, bring, you invite the press as early as you possibly can. Get that out of the way. Now flood all the questions, guys. We're doing one night. It's two hours. Press that we're dealing with the media. So you get your media night, night done and done. The ticket situation, which can become crazy for players, Invariably now that's handled. They're smart enough to realize we don't want that inconvenience in our lives and we don't want that distraction. Here, mammy, daddy, our brother, or yeah. sister, or friend, there's my allocation. Sort them, whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah. they have no distractions whatsoever. Getting back to your point, Chris, everything is managed to a fine detail. And remember, a lot of these guys now are, are the Lees and the Kevin McLaughlins and the Robbie Henleys and obviously Aiden O'Shea's or whatever. They've gone up into an all Ireland fi final, and some of them have played in seven, eight of those. So they recognise where can we, where can we uh, um, uh, tweak it and make that little bit of adjustment that will make. And if the game of inches, that famous uh, uh, um, cliche, any little, any little advantage we can get, just to mind ourselves about diet and all that thing is managed well for them, and it will be. I mean, they bring their own. Their own chef with them. Their own. I mean, they don't trust, uh, say, um, um, hotel food. Oh, you know, again, um, wow. Wow. They, they know exactly. They know exactly what they require. I mean, that wasn't in my day. Um, um, Sean Julian up there. Yeah, and, and good luck to Sean. He obviously has a lot of experience. He knows exactly what they need. They, you know, so all that kind of stuff is dealt with brilliantly, brilliantly well in Mayo. And when it comes to an investment and trying to buy success. We're not, we haven't been found wanting. The county board, in fairness, in this county has stood up to the plate in that regard. Um, and they've delivered everything and anything this team has want, uh, 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 their desire, their way wish, weekends away, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Everything is dealt with. Yeah, but the best but that's, a, that's a reflection too of, of, I know we haven't actually won the Holy Grail, but is it a reflection of a team that has been in the top divisions and the top echelons of, of GEA for the last? 25 years. Yeah. We, Stephen, we have contributed so much. Crow Park yeah. love Mayo. Yeah. Business yeah. in Dublin love Mayo. I, yeah. remember, I remember, like, I mean, I, I, I'm coming up to an Ireland final, and this is something else that's removed from the equation, from the manager's equation. I would have taken maybe 15 calls from hotels in Dublin just begging for the Mayo team. Because yeah. Yeah, a, Mayo, a Mayo team coming into the city west was equivalent of six Tyrones. 10 Armas or, and maybe two or three goals. Because when Mayo go on tour, they know how to spend. <laughs> yeah, you're 100% right. We can take it. Money burns a hole in our pockets. Absolutely. Like, I mean, yeah, and, and uh, the likes of that kind of stuff. It is important. Like, I mean, I know Crow Park love us because uh, we generate great, great hype. And more importantly, we play a brand and a spectacle of football that is so easy on the eye. That's why we are universally loved. And there's a danger here, lads. If we, look, if we go on to win this All-Ireland final, that universal love is gone on some yeah. season. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> hates that. Them fuckers, Mayo. They've got their all now. Let's go out and fucking beat them next year. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, I take it all day long. Every day. Yeah. Twice yeah, on yeah, Sundays. Yeah, yeah. But look at Stephen. Remember now, I, 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 I have a few years in you guys. I grew up in the decade of the seventies, an eleven-year span between uh, was it nineteen seventy sixty-nine and nineteen eighty. We didn't win a single provincial final. I mean, wow. you know, and that's a fact. I, and I do recall a glorious occasion. I, I, I snuck out of boarding school in Carmel College Motor in boarding, and I got a lift up to see Mayo playing Dublin, the the, the, the real aristocrats at the time, that Dublin team. And we only lost by four points, uh, 213 to, to 217 or 214 to 217, a cracking game of football. Uh, Jerk King from Westport uh, got the curly finger to start full back on J Jimmy Keevney. I think that the full back um, who was picked to play, I won't mention him by name, uh, but I think he stopped off on the way up for a couple of pints. <laughs> in most, in, in, in most. I don't think they were traveling by bus. Well, he stopped off and uh, he was dropped for that particular league final and Jerry King came in to make his debut. I don't think he played too many games for, for Mayo thereafter, but he started. Willie Joe was, was playing that day. 
Billy Fitzpatrick was in his pomp, fly, flying around the place. He played exceptionally well at corner forward. The Danny Dolans of this world. But I remember thinking the, ma the magic of us scoring 213 against Dublin. I said, if we can do that, we're going to win on Ireland finals. I said, look at who we are. Yeah. But you know, there's, and I, I'm just making the point there, lads, because I didn't have the, you know, the excitement and the, the, the fun that uh, Mayo supporters have in recent years. And don't knock it because, and I often remember going up on the bus on a Saturday and going into Croke Park and I said, look at, the, look at everybody around us, guys. Um, or even in my own mind, I said, look at the party and the excitements and down by the big tree and drinking pints and fucking Yahoo. And, and it was just, <laughs> and there's a part of me, there was a part of me that said, Jesus, I wouldn't mind being out in the middle of that for a bit of crack. Of course, of course, yes, yes. Yeah, so I know, I know there's enormous demand for tickets, and I know there's a lot of people I've been um, haunted here, and I know it's desperate. And but at the there same time, three sorted, yeah. Pardon? There are one sorted though. Uh, yeah, good night, Chris. Chris. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought you'd fall, I thought you'd fall asleep there. <laughs> you bet when the, the word of tick, tickets come into the, in, uh, the conversation, you left off there. That's the only that can be a work done in the last two weeks at all. <laughs> uh, uh, look at, yeah, but it, 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 isn't it a wonderful, a wonderful distraction? Oh, it's brilliant. It is. Oh. Like, even, even though we're all about the tickets, people, complete, complete strangers are texting me. You know, any chance of a ticket? They think I, I, I have this magical ball, and I, if I could give everyone a ticket that wanted a ticket, I would. Believe, believe me, I don't even have one myself. You're, you're familiar. You're familiar with Burns Babes, the great Mick Burn in Casabar. And uh, when I was going through um, in, in 1995, 96, when I took over the bank of the mayor team, we were playing in some desperate locations against Division Three opponents. Falling over the line, incidentally, by a single point. I was probably, yeah, I was probably at most of them with my grandfather. Go on, anyway. Oh yeah, good man, good man, Stephen. But uh, I remember uh, when we got the All Ireland final in '96. I I went down to meet Mick Byrne. I said, Mick, yeah, I mean, you've been brilliant, bringing busloads of forty and fifty spectators to our games in Antrim and from Manor and Wexford, where nobody would travel, you know. And you just got such a, a sense of satisfaction and warmth when you saw Burns Babes arriving in to support the Mayor team. And I never forgot it. So I went to him before the Ireland final. I said, look, at Mick, I know you're 50 on the bus and how you, how you fix, I, I, I might be able to get you a, a couple, you know. He said, John, I wouldn't take a ticket from you. He said, the fun for me is in the hunt for the ticket. Oh, he said, I love oh, it. Wow. Bring it up, guys, in West Clare or Wexford or Donegal, <laughs> guys on my path through the pub, that he became familiar with and might have a number, he said, that's the fun for me, the hunt for the ticket. So, Stephen, hang in there and start hunting. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next couple of days that they surface anyway. So that's well, what we tell ourselves. Uh, Chris, it, you know, it, my advice is, I remember in 1992, I was in the Defence Forces and uh, we had a great, great uh, man who's gone to his eternal reward. He was the kit man with the Army football team. And uh, he had the job in Crow Park of opening up the big ironing gate uh, uh, and just uh, um, uh, the Hogan stand entrance there opposite the hotel, a little bit further down from the, the premium. You'd be, in, you'd, you'd be all familiar with, with the premium entrance to, into the Hogan stand, boys, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, there, was a big, there was a big iron gate there. And I, for some reason, I was outside, whatever I was doing, just before the game. And this guy came up to me, John, John, John. He was ever flying in from New York, a Donegal supporter. As you recall, it was Donny God that won that all around in 92, beaten Dublin. And he said, please, can you do anything for me? Can you? I'm begging you. So I went up on the big iron gate and I had the, the knock for Shamie McKenna, God rest him, an arm man. He was a quartermaster in the Defence Forces. And I gave that knock and I heard the bolt being pulled back. John, what do you want? I said, this man, is there any way you can sort him? And he just grabbed him, pulled him in. I get over there to the hill 16 out of the way quick boy that's the route how you get there <laughs> right. now it'd be easier now to get into north korea i mean <laughs> i mean they're scrutinizing you they're looking at you you've got this and you've got that and, you know, and it's just impossible but that time but even that alone you know I, it was something nostalgic about that and the fun of and getting a guy into Croke park and uh, yeah but times have changed it, go, go, going back, and 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 I want to before we, we wrap this up, um, I want to thank you for some of the best days I've ever had in Crow Park. I was there at Kerry. I was there in '96 in the in the two matches against Mead. 
I was there in Offaly the day Princess Diana died, actually. Yeah, I was at that match as well, yeah. Yeah, the Offaly game. I was at, like, as many of them as I could get. And even, like you said, it was the excitement of, of finding a ticket the evening before or the morning before, getting that phone call. There was no mobile phones at the minute, so you had to wait at the house yeah. for that call. Yeah. And it was just memories are just unreal. Yeah, Stephen, I look at I, I know, and I, I, I deservedly I've taken my fair degree of criticism. I have a unique record in that uh, in a space of a couple of months, I lost a, um, an, um, um, a club championship across Minor, beaten by Nemo Rangers in March. In September, we lost a senior final, and a week later, I had uh, I was in charge of the Mayo under twenty ones, and we lost to Armagh by a point. So I had quite a unique re record as the loser. <laughs> <laughs> Where was so, that? Was that our was that our Mass final in 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 a final chance? No, no, we played. I, I, you know what? A memory escapes me. Uh, I can't recall where where we played, but we lost by a, a, a single point. And so okay. I had the trauma of losing three All Ireland finals in, in in a very short space of time. So that record won't be beaten, incidentally. <laughs> so, <laughs> even for you to say, we you hope had, not. Yeah, for, to say you had some good days uh, and with Mayo when I was in charge. Um, that itself is a, no a novelty because. Uh, Lots of guys have um, have bad memories uh, of me being involved. Uh, well, look listen, at, John, eat, eating bread is soon forgotten. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, at, it's <laughs> it's always a privilege and an honour uh, uh, to be involved and to be asked to manage any team. And I'm lucky to be involved with an awfully team where we're getting a little bit of joy and a bit of success with a combination of things happening up there, which is a good news story because I grew That's up. Brilliant. Yeah, I grew up watching the Offleys in the seventies, the Tony McTiggs, the Kieran Claffies, the Larry Cockins. Paddy McCormack's Iron Man, they were iconic in my time. They were kind of heroes of mine. And to be asked to manage an off team, I mean, it's a, it's a huge honour that they would trust you to take over their, their county side. So likewise uh, with Mayo, it was always a great, a great honour. But I have to say, they're managed by a very, very good guy, lots of experience, James Horn. And to see Kieran McDonald in there bringing his uh, piece of magic to it as well. And I know he is revered by all the lads. And I know he was involved with a development squad a couple of years ago here in Mayo with Tom O'Reilly and David Heaney and others, and they did some fantastic work. And it's great to see Keir McDonald in particular, and James Horne's a double all-star. All so they, they command great respect in front of the group of lads. But look at, it's all leading to, to Saturday evening at five o'clock. We'll be up there with fingers crossed and uh, Novena said and the whole lot, and let's hope we have a great <laughs> do, do you have a score prediction? Yeah, look at... Uh, it's very. I, I think, uh, uh, um, Chris, we'll be very, very conscious not to concede goals. I think, and we have conceded goals, and we've become a target for teams in all Ireland finals because we've conceded yeah. goals. Early goals. Early goals. Go back to yeah. Michael Murphy, you know, last year. And teams will, and that's why I think the likes of Cotton McShane might be started because it might identify a vulnerability in a mayor team. Now, we will be very, very conscious of that. And we will have worked extremely hard. And you won't see from the throw-in, like happened in last year's order and final, where we were chasing the game after we conceded an early goal to Con Callan uh, in, in the first 15 seconds. So that's critical. So yeah. let's assume that we don't do that. I think like the Tommy Conroy, are, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction that Adrian Shea is going to hit the onion bag. I just think... He had, a, he, 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 took, um, he had an ankle injury going into the last game, the Orange semi-final. Yeah. A lot of people would know this. He had the, okay. he had yeah. the black, black blue taken off a couple of days before the All-Ireland semi-final. No, nobody knows that kind of stuff. Not many knows that. They criticise him. So he wasn't fully fit. So I think he's, he's got a, a point to prove. This might be his last All-Ireland final. It might be the last All-Ireland final for all these guys. So yeah. I'm predicting that he's going to hit the onion bag the next day. I mean, I, I, I do think that uh, he'll be able to take um, Ronan McNamee at full back high ball, big ban, and we can get a diagonal ball into him. Chris, we might follow the line by a point or two. I think uh, um, Ulster score a goal, and I think we that defence of ours will be very, very solid. If we have Oshie Mullen back, it'll be an enormous plus because he's a counter-attacking abilities with his pace that he has. And you have like, him and Paddy Drucken and Lee Keegan bursting our defence, counter-attacking. I think it Break just, those lines. it'll create chaos in, in the Tyrone team. And remember, there's no psychological baggage playing Tyrone. We have that with Kerry, believe it or not. It's there, it's reality, it's factually, what I'm saying is accurate. We don't have, we have a great record against Tyrone. Right. Yeah. In fact, I think we spooked them a little bit. I think they fear us. So yes. it's important. If we get the game on our terms, and that's an old cliche, get the, if we don't concede dearly, I think were we to play like we did against Galway and Dublin in, that, in the first halves in particular, 
we have a pop chance of beating Tyrone because they will go into lockdown and they yeah. can they can do lockdown very no pun intended incidentally there Stephen <laughs> they, they, they will do it very very well on the pitch as we cannot give them a three four five point start if we do we're in trouble I, I think we'll have all our all that uh, we've had a couple of weeks now to get every aspect of that right I think the tackle bags will have been out in the, uh, on the Mayo pitch uh, you know, because I think it's going to be very, very physical. I think Joe McQuillan will have a big say in the whole thing. I hope we keep 15 guys on, on the field at all times. I hope we won't see black Very guys. important. Yeah, and I hope the referee yeah, has a similar style to David Kodak the last day, where he let the thing flow. Yeah. That might necessarily suit, suit us, because I think the physicality, those and Tyrone boys play on the edge a little bit. But nonetheless, it's a novel pairing. There's huge excitement and anticipation looking forward to it. And I think this it was just a justifiable reason because I think we're going to have a cracker. Good stuff. Good stuff. It could be a draw nice. though. It could be a draw and it I'm not running it out. Yeah, it I'm, could be because there's no I, extra I, time. There's no extra time. Yeah, it's a replay. Yeah. And like I mean God yeah. knows Core Park are stuck, are stuck for a few pounds. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Joe McQuillan has already got the the vouchers for a jury so a, a weekend stay for two with dinner thrown in. Make, go, do your stuff, Joe. <laughs> That's great. John, thanks so much for, for jumping on with us today and hopefully we'll see you around uh, Jones's Road at some stage over the weekend. Well, it won't be the big tree and it won't be Quinns. We'll have to, it might be Mahers and Ballybock down near Fairview, but we'll, we, we hope we see a great mayor crowd buzzing, particularly around 7 o'clock, 7.30. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks very so much, John. Cheers, John. Thanks for coming Thank on. You very, very welcome, boys. Good luck with your programs. Good luck. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, bye. John. Bye bye. There you have it, boys. Now let's. Now that, that was I good really, old crack. I really, really enjoyed that. I mean, I literally, when I got into properly following Mayo, it would have been when he took over. I remember the. The pushing of the the, the the previous management there were push rumors of pushing cars and train and that sort of thing and then john took over and the fitness the fitness was the fitness, big thing that the fitness time, yeah. just went through the roof and yeah, they, like they, i said they, they i started following easy. every national league game myself and martin and my grandfather would travel as much as we could and if we got a bus we get a bus um you know it was magical times yeah i think he it's funny that team Obviously, 89, the 89 team broke a long time between the last All Ireland win and getting to the final. But his team set an expectation that was higher and it kind yeah. of has continued on from there. Mayo oh, without, without a doubt, I do reckon he has set the, he set the foundation for, was, the, for, was, the, for the teams that, that came forward. Yeah, it was only two or three seasons after that that Mayo won the National League. Um, yeah. And then it kind of to to did, did John not take over the team again at, at some point? He did I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, he came back then. I think he did. He came back at one point. Yeah. Was it was it two thousand and two? I thought. Was it? Oh, he three. came back. I think he did come oh, back. We, yeah. We, we, we must back. we must we must check that out and we'll yeah. we'll bring it on to the next podcast. Yeah. Um. Later later on, we're going. To, this is the first of our male podcast this week, so I'm looking forward to, to the next one as well. Yeah. Bye, right, guys. Um, big thanks to John Mahon for uh, massive thanks uh, like I said this was of all the ones we've done and we've done like, like MMA stars rugby stars we've done TV stars it was, uh, it was iconic of our youth you see yeah John was and, and he has that the... I was I was talking to him like during the week setting this up and it's that authoritative voice he has a very authoritative voice it's like a headmaster's voice and I know he was in the <laughs> army right you get, you get a thing for that do you <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. It is. <laughs> right, listen, listen, lads. Really enjoyed that one. I can't wait for the next one. Good stuff, guys. Okay, All right, yeah. guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Dead Hedgehogs YouTube channel. Right, guys, and thank you very much for your support. And if you would like to support us a little bit more, you can always become a patron. Link is in the description. Cheers, guys.